And so, Jordan, I, I really think it's actually extremely interesting that string beans are actually indigenous to South America, yet you never seem to see them witnessed in traditional cooking. David? Yeah? I don't give a shit. Look at the time, man. Uh, it's, uh... The I feel that was hard, because you're like, that is actually quite interesting. And in this, in this essay, I... No, David, David, shut up. Where it's the chainsaw minute. I already said it's <laughs> the chainsaw minute. I'm David, and this is your dose of Chainsaw Man. You can join us every Friday where we see what masterpiece Fujimoto put out. I'm Jordan, and if you're looking for regular shonen flop goodness, you can find our next episode to hear our full thoughts on Do Retry featuring Super Dave. Maybe it's pronounced Do Retry. I don't fucking know. You'll have to listen to the episode and find out. You can hear it this Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And as a reminder, these recordings are open to everyone to listen and chat along with on the Show and Flop Discord every 3.30 p.m. Eastern when there's a new chapter out. Just heads up, there is not one next week, so we'll see y'all in two weeks. Find a link to it in the show notes or on our site. And Jordan, what was your devil this week? Well, David, last week we got a kitten. And Meow. he is adorable. His name is Ozzy. He's a tiny baby and also such a troublemaker. We had like this big cage that we keep him in. It's more of a fence. We keep him in downstairs when we uh, can't be right around him. And uh, he has started climbing out of it. Oh, little baby. Look, it's impossible to be mad at him. He's just a little guy. He's a huge handful, man. We, uh, we're trying really hard to like uh, make his kitty childhood a happy one, you know? I understand. I understand. I remember when Ravioli was a little puppuccino. Oh, yes. Yeah, she invented a new form of stretching today where she stood up fully and then just pulled her like head all the way back. So like stretched her chest out. And I had never seen a dog stretch like that before. <laughs> the legendary third type of downward downward up i guess or wait no the dog is the point of that it's the it's the mountain dog stretch which makes sense because she's a burmese anyway yeah. mine was the day of the week devil where that's fucking happened to me i remember i had this one situation where like that sucks man that's why i thought you'd relate to this i relate to it david i am fucking sorry it's bullshit when that happens it's like yo this is my life it's now or never I don't want to live forever. <laughs> anyway, Jordan, enough about that. Let's hear the plot summary for... Chapter 150! Yes! Dreams Next Stage! Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> David, I hear it's, uh, it's 150 or more to see, you know? There's one for each Pokemon, except for there are 151 Pokemon, so I'll make this joke again next episode. Not uh, not according to the poker rap. True. <laughs> what I love about Mew is that Mew wasn't supposed to be in the game, and then like this one programmer just kind of snuck it in at like the last second. And big if true. Yeah. If it weren't for the fact that Mew became like a huge like selling point, kind of, he definitely would have gotten fired. Good for him. Yeah. So let's get into the fucking plot summary for, God, this fucking chapter, man. Denji is walking home with Nayata on his back. He's giving her a little piggyback ride as she reflects that people are going back to work and, damn, she might have to go back to school tomorrow. Meanwhile, Denji is reflecting on how he has attained the normal life he thought he wanted. He then, like, uh, steps on a dead crow and imagines that it's Pochita. And Pochita says, hey, Denji, you know, you've attained this dream you wanted. Like, what's next? You know, like. Do you want girlfriends? You want money? And Denji says, Popcorn David. <laughs> Denji says that he wants to be Chainsaw Man yes. as he flashes back to real life and realizes that his house is on fire. No! <laughs> oh man, I think the talking heads have a song about this situation. All his dogs in Meowie are inside. No! Oh no. Denji is literally tripped by Barum, who gloats about the fire. Public safety starts firing at him when suddenly the whip double shows up, kills a bunch of them. God, what a this is just fucking crazy ass chapter, right? crazy chapter first of all fuck barum all my homies hate barum also it's uh the whip hybrid oh, okay the whip hybrid i apologize yeah jordan cut <laughs> the lore is so deep it's you know Ch chainsaw man is really the my most spiritual manga <laughs> I will elaborate. I actually could see Fujimoto having that exact same answer. Someone asked him about 
This is the most depressing chapter of Chainsaw Man, I think. He killed dogs. I mean, here's the thing. He might not have. He might not have. Maybe the dogs got out. But like Fujimoto is that type of guy where he will just kill the dogs. Yeah, he killed power on Denji's birthday. Yeah. So, Jordan, why do you think this week's chapter was a 10 out of 10? So much shit happens, you know? We got to see Pochita again. Little, little Pochita, he's talking to Denji. It's a very sweet moment. And Denji, as David pointed out, he is going up that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, man. He, he has attained safety, and now he's got to find that self-actualization. Thank you for crediting me. Otherwise, H Bomber guy was definitely going to make a video canceling you. Yes, he would have. <laughs> God, I love how H Bomber guy put out a four hour video about it, about James Somerton, like stealing content. And then Todd in the Shadows put out an additional two hour video about how, you know, beyond the things that he steals, he also just lies all the time and makes up shit. It's like, God yeah. damn. Yeah, God, absolutely nuked by that guy. Oh. But yeah, I mean, I really think that's kind of the theme of Chainsaw Man, that the entire series is just watching Dennis go through the hierarchy of needs. Like, literally, the start is food and shelter being loved, and then it really will be interesting to see the self-actualization saga. But this is kind of, this moment is kind of Dennis moving up that pyramid, and now how he's really at that esteem level where now he can really value himself as a person and that identity as Chainsaw Man. Yeah, but I mean, here's the thing. Reading part two, it has been obvious that Denji is just more depressed. The entire part, he has just been down. He has been sadder. I mean, it makes sense based on how Chainsaw Man part one ended. I think a lot of it is that, like, he can't be Chainsaw Man as much, you know? Yeah, though it sounds like he's doing a lot better now because Denji literally has a contract with Pochita to have a happy life. And Pochita's like, well, you've met my contract. I do actually think that was Pochita talking to him and not so much him thinking of Pochita. I mean, here's the thing. When I say Denji, Denji's like imagining Pochita, mm -hmm. but Pochita is inside Denji. Like Pochita is in, is a part of Denji. So like when he's imagining him, I do mean like he is talking to him in some way. It's like... Oh, okay. Yeah. I also want to say, I love how it's kind of somewhat of the setting, how people are just so completely over devil bullshit happening that they just don't care anymore. It's almost kind of like how people have just gotten so numb to the gun violence in America that now it's just a part of life where they unironically sell bulletproof backpacks to children. I was thinking about stuff like that, you know, like people get used to things very quickly. I remember, um, I, I don't know where this quote is from, but I remember someone talking about uh, what it's like to live live in a in like basically a fascist dictatorship more or less yeah uh so trump era am i right where we're gonna be in a couple years am i right no but he was basically just like if you're not like outright killed it's not like there's like this huge event or anything things just get shittier they just yeah. it's the same as it was before it just gets shittier things just get worse but it's not like a huge change that's how you describe russian history every sentence about Russian history just then says, and then it got worse. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Uh, Russia. Yeah. Fucking Russia. Yeah. Also, Jordan, I feel you must have loved this, the diegetic thought bubbles, where if you notice that Denji doesn't have thought, proper thought bubbles, it just makes use of the negative space around him yeah. with the parts of the wall that aren't in shadow. So I thought that was another really great Will Eisner inspired moment, like how he had that diegetic paneling before the Chainsaw Man church. Will Eisner, man, the master, the master. Will fuck your yeah. speech bubbles, Eisner. Exactly. I mean, Fujimoto is so good at this. He knows how to lay out a chapter. He knows how to lay out this stuff in a way that is engaging and interesting. Like, you go back to, like, his compositions. I love how I was really taken aback by how Barum is just standing. He's just, like, so proud of himself when he sees that he uh, it, yeah. it's on fire. And he's just like, I didn't think Azima Taka would make you angry enough, but cats and dogs are more flammable. And it's like, you motherfucker. You motherfucker. He has so much much heat right now david such a heel you know also i, I just got and it's even worse because you see that super cute panel of meowie riding on naita's head yes. when they go shopping and taking the dogs out oh god it's, it's brutal it's fucking brutal it really is. I also think, so we talked about the dead bird. I wonder if that's symbolic at all about Asa dying, because remember the war devil is actually represented by an owl. Maybe that's a stretch, but I think that would be an interesting parallel if that's supposed to represent some sort of relationship, because that's the only bird-like devil I believe has shown up. Well, doesn't Asa's name also mean like bird? One second. I'm going to look it up. No, I don't want the Hebrew name. <laughs> I looked up Asa and it says it means to shit. <laughs> 
in <laughs> Japanese, which is definitely not right. This is literally what Google Translate. I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it in the chat. In Portuguese, it means wing. <laughs> uh, what does Aza mean? It means morning, it seems like. Yeah, like, that sounds right. Like, it's morning. Oh, yeah. It doesn't like Yoru mean night or something. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Yeah. So never mind. Yeah, Yoru means evening. Gotcha. To shit. Asa's name just means to shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to say the art felt kind of unpolished. Like, if you notice, like, when Denji is trying to grab his report, it's not literally, like, filled in. I think it's been an observation. A lot of the art in part two has felt kind of rushed or unfinished. Yeah. So maybe Fujimoto is just, like, maybe he really should just go bi-weekly or fortnightly. Dab dab. <laughs> I will say, like, I have never been a fan of manga art where it's, like, trying to show show motion and they just put in like these blurry like horizontal lines i i don't think it ever looks good this is not a chainsaw man specific issue it's just it happens yeah. a lot in this chapter and yeah i i just never like it <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know and then also jordan i have to say this is definitely a zero out of ten chapter of the doggies die that <sighs> is a fact but it also you know it, it's like it it underflows and goes back to 10 it goes to 255 <laughs> fair oh goodness all right jordan anything else you want to toss in these poor doggies, I hope they okay, but I don't trust them right? with Fujimoto. You know, people are like, oh man, he killed more dogs than uh, Araki did. No, he killed more dogs at once than Araki did. Araki's been doing this for like over 30 years, okay? Yeah. Uh, nobody has killed more dogs than him, okay? It's it's like one at a time, just like the sheer amount is staggering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Araki's like, you come, you better not come for the king. You come with the king, you best not miss, bitch. <laughs> Those dogs. Uh, all right. Well, speaking of Kings Jordan, I want to say thank you so much for all your hard work on the show. Yeah, David, thank you so much for editing too, man. <laughs> oh, no problem. You can find us on Twitter at Shonen Flopcast, Tumblr Shonen Dash Flop, and our website shonenflop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcast. Props to Shannon for the awesome cover art. You can find her online at Illuminati. As a reminder, you can join us every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern when there's a new chapter out. Just for, again, there is no chapter next week. And stay tuned for Monday as we give our full thoughts on Do Retry featuring Super Dave, who I believe is actually listening in right now. Hi, Super Dave. It was a great episode. I'm looking forward to editing it. And so, Jordan, though, I have to say, though, that you know who really loves dogs is Rize because you know Russians have long since had a very strong positive culture towards dogs. Oh my dogs. god, David! And so David, it's David, David, Chainsaw Minute is passed. Bye, bye.